It's Mushroom Month and we're celebrating by talking about 30 different types of lesser known mushrooms. This is part two. If you missed the first 10 mushrooms, you can check that out up here. Otherwise, let's jump into the next 10 mushrooms. So first we have the birch polypore, otherwise known as Fomitopsis betulina. These mushrooms grow on birch, obviously, it's in the name, and they kind of look like this little UFO that's just stuck to the side of the tree. Now they are a polypore mushroom, which means they have pore on the bottom of the cap where they release their spores instead of gills like lots of the other fleshy fungi. The birch polypore is a parasitic fungus, which means it looks for old and weakened birch trees, which it attacks before it eats the insides and fruits off of them. Now, birch polypore isn't the kind of mushroom that shows up and then just decays after a few weeks. Fruiting bodies of this mushroom can last for a very long time. It's also interesting to note that birch polypore is considered a medicinal mushroom. It's nowhere near as popular as some of the other mushrooms like reishi or turkey tail. That being said, it has been studied and powerful compounds have been isolated. Compounds such as triterpenes and something known as agaric acid, which is antiparasitic. So it does make sense that this mushroom might have some other potential benefits that we just haven't studied to their full extent. Next up is a mushroom that to the untrained eye looks like it's just another boring fungus, but it's actually super cool. It's called Fomis fomentarius, otherwise known as the tinder fungus. And no, it's not going to help you with your next hookup. It's called the tinder fungus because when you break it open, you can pull some of the fluff out and it can actually be used as tinder to start a fire. Now, this mushroom is also known as the hoof fungus because it kind of looks like a horse's hoof. This mushroom is relatively common, and in fact, in this forest, it's absolutely everywhere, but it still has an interesting history. All the way back some 5,000 years ago, there was a man named Otzi who just happened to die in a really convenient location up in the Alps that preserved his body perfectly. And among his few possessions were this exact mushroom. He was also apparently carrying the birch polypore, so researchers theorized that he was using the birch polypore to treat stomach parasites, and he had the hoof fungus, or the tinder fungus, for starting fires. Next up is the hedgehog mushroom, or hiddenum urpandum, and from the top it looks kind of like a boring, nondescript mushroom, but like a hedgehog, it has long spikes, which are located underneath the cap, and this is the part of the mushroom that releases its spores, and it has these spikes or teeth instead of gills or pores. There are a number of different species which have this feature, and many of them are also called hedgehog, which kind of shows the difficulty with common names, but again, the one that grows here is called hiddenum urpandum. And it's worth looking for because it is a choice edible mushroom if you can identify it. Hedgehogs grow in similar habitat to chanterelle mushrooms, and from the top they do kind of superficially look like chanterelles. So if you're looking for hedgehog mushrooms, go in kind of semi-open areas like this that are kind of covered in leaf litter, sometimes in pine needles, and see if you can find a hedgehog mushroom. They fruit later in the fall, but make sure you get there before the squirrels get there because they like to eat them too. Next up is a real showstopper. It's a mushroom that's super unique. It's known as the Devil's Tooth or Hidden Alum Pecchii. This one is super unique because when young and during moist weather, it secretes a dark red blood. Well, it's not actually blood, but it does really look like it, which is why this mushroom is also sometimes called the bleeding tooth fungus. It takes on a bunch of weird shapes, but as it grows, it also does have teeth underneath the cap instead of gills, which is why it has tooth in the name. And although this mushroom has been described as looking like a Danish pastry that's topped with strawberry jam, it is not edible. Not necessarily because it's poisonous, but more so just because apparently it tastes extremely bitter. If you want to see this mushroom, look late in the fall for trees that it grows with, specifically conifers like pine. By the way, if you like mushrooms, feel free to take a second and hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. Plus, if you want to see more mushroom content, feel free to go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll be putting out more mushroom videos. Take a second to imagine that you had harvested a beautiful looking mushroom from underneath an oak tree. You brought it home, you chopped it up, you threw it in your soup and you ate it and it was pretty tasty. But then six hours later, you start to feel a little bit queasy. That queasiness turns into a horrendous sickness where you're vomiting and have diarrhea and you've never felt sicker in your life. Until thankfully, you start to feel better. The next day, maybe you're kind of returning to normal and you think maybe that was just a weird episode and you're super glad that it's over. But a day later, it suddenly comes back with a fury, your liver and your kidneys shut down and you die. 
That obviously sounds like a horrible situation, but that could be what happens if you are unlucky enough to eat the death cap, otherwise known as Amanita phylloides. This is by far the world's deadliest mushroom, and it's the one that's responsible for most of the serious mushroom poisonings in the US and beyond. It's a pretty boring looking mushroom, to be honest. It typically has an olive green cap, and the rest of the mushroom is usually a white, with the gills underneath being that classic Amanita white, and it also has a vulva at the base, which is also classic for the Amanita species. Still, it's one worth knowing how to identify, because it's literally the poster child for not picking and eating a mushroom unless you're 100% sure you know exactly what it is because quite literally your life could depend on it. One of the reasons why people get into trouble with this mushroom is because when it's young and it's still in its egg shape, it looks quite similar to the edible and much cultivated paddy straw mushroom, otherwise known as Volvariella vulvaceae. So people will go in the wild and harvest a young death cap thinking that it's a paddy straw mushroom, take it home and have a really bad outcome. Now keep in mind that the death cap is an extreme case. I don't want to be fear mongering or causing any sort of mycophobia, but again, it's definitely one to look out for if you're going to be harvesting wild mushrooms. Another mushroom that's something to avoid is something called the deadly skull cap or the funeral bell. As you can tell by the name, it's also deadly poisonous. It contains amotoxins, which is the same class of compounds as in the previously mentioned death cap mushroom. This mushroom doesn't result in as many poisonings and that's because it's a lot smaller and a lot less likely to be eaten. It grows on old rotting wood and it really does look unimportant, like just another LBM or little brown mushroom. Some people have confused it with honey mushrooms, but to be honest, I don't really think it looks like honey mushrooms at all. I guess if you really stretch your imagination, you might think that it looks like a honey mushroom, but really that's not something that you can get confused. But it could, however, be confused with some other edible foliotas or by overly ambitious foragers that are looking for psilocybin containing mushrooms. So in general, little brown mushrooms aren't really great ones to identify for beginners because literally some of them need a microscope to be able to identify them properly. Luckily, Gallerina marginata, which is a scientific name for this species, can be identified without a microscope. So if you are looking for some of these little brown mushrooms, this is a good one to be able to identify and of course avoid harvesting it and avoid eating it, but still doesn't mean it isn't cool to find in the woods. Okay, so this next one I'm gonna talk about is not technically a mushroom, but it often grows in a mushroom-esque manner and people often mistake it for fungus, which is why I wanna talk about it in this video. It's called the ghost pipe or Monotropa uniflora. And although it is a plant, it doesn't contain any chlorophyll. Instead of getting energy from the sun, this organism is parasitic and actually feeds off of other mycorrhizal fungi. It often gets mistaken for a mushroom and some people even refer to it as the ghost fungus because its life cycle is similar in that it does pop up randomly, much like a mushroom would, and it grows to full size in a number of days, much like a mushroom would. But again, this is not a mushroom. Still, Still, it's always something to look for and for me it's always a treat to find it while mushroom hunting. Speaking of mushroom like organisms that aren't technically mushrooms, I have to tell you about another thing that I really like seeing while out mushroom hunting. It's called wolf's milk or Lycogala epidendrum and it grows these round pink fruiting bodies that grow on the side of well decayed logs. This one really does look like a mushroom but it's technically an amoeba with a really cool feature which is if you poke one of those pink fruiting bodies with a stick it'll actually burst with a pink goo that kind of looks like Pepto-Bismol. Some people think this is kind of gross but I think it's pretty fun to do. Now when they aren't fruiting like this they're kind of roaming around and eating other protozoa and fungi and bacteria. Eventually as they age they lose that pink color and turn a little more brown and the inside kind of turns into more of a paste but if you can find them when they're younger it is a really fun party trick to pull in the woods. Next up is the shaggy mane also known as Caprinus comatus and this mushroom isn't really lesser known it's one that a lot of mushroom enthusiasts probably know about but it is a super cool mushroom that I like a lot so I wanted to add it here. You'll find shaggy mane growing in fields or lawns or on trail sides and it kind of has this shaggy cylindrical top, which is why it gets the name Shaggy Mane, and also sometimes called the lawyer's wig. Now the coolest thing about shaggy mane mushroom is it kind of has this self-destruct mechanism. Shortly after harvesting it, it will turn into kind of a black inky pile of goo. This will also happen even if you don't harvest it as they grow and as they age, they eventually just curl up and turn into black ink. 
This is a process called deliquescing, and shaggy manes aren't the only ones that do this. There's other species of Coprinus that do this, but it's still pretty cool. Shaggy mane is a choice edible mushroom and it is easily cultivated, but because of this self-destruct mechanism, you're not likely to find it at the grocery store or even at the farmer's market because it needs to be cooked and consumed so close to harvest that it really just doesn't make sense. The only time you might see it at the grocery store is if it has been dried before being packaged. And I've seen this before at even large commercial farms where they do grow shaggy mane on synthetic logs and then dry them and package them and sell them at the grocery store. The other thing about shaggy mane that's interesting is that it was thought to contain coprine, which is a drug that kind of induces an instant hangover when combined with alcohol. This compound has actually been commercialized and has been used to treat alcoholism. So the common knowledge was that shaggy manes, although they are indeed edible, they're not to be enjoyed with a glass of wine. Although I've never experimented with this myself, apparently coprinus comatis or shaggy mane does not actually contain coprine. This compound is only actually found in its close cousin, the common ink cap, also known as Copernopsis atramentaria. So although caution is probably advised if you're gonna eat shaggy manes and be drinking alcohol, but it's probably nothing to worry about. Finally, today we have the lobster mushroom or Hypomyces lactiflorum. This one is super cool because technically it's not an individual mushroom species, but a mushroom host that gets taken over by another parasitic fungus. The most common host species for the lobster mushroom are Lactarius and Rushula species. So basically how it works is a mushroom grows such as Rushula brevipedes and then it will be taken over by Hypomyces lactiflorum and completely covered in this red orange covering which is why it's called a lobster mushroom because it kind of looks like a lobster and it will be totally indistinguishable from the original host mushroom it looks really really cool now lobster mushrooms are considered a choice edible people harvest them and sell them at farmers market and people eat and enjoy them but there is one caveat we cannot be 100 percent sure that hypomyces lactiflorum the parasitic fungus doesn't ever take over a poisonous host species so you can imagine a situation where there's a dead poisonous mushroom that Hypomyces lactiflorum takes over and turns into a lobster mushroom but as far as I can tell this isn't a serious concern I don't know of any cases where people have eaten lobster mushrooms that were actually poisonous and gotten sick so I'm sure it's probably fine but it's definitely something to keep in mind if you're ever eating lobster mushrooms so there's another 10 lesser known mushrooms if I miss some of your favorites Write it in the comments, let me know, and who knows, maybe we'll cover it in the next one. Until then, please feel free to go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more mushroom content. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.